Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Work along with Dwayne Bussey with Bolt Marketing, and we're seeing green in both green and livestock futures trade as we move through the noon hour. And we want to start off over in the grains, Dwayne. Soybeans kind of led the charge early on, and I know we've had these tight supplies and we've had the bull spreads working and strong cash basis levels, but we have another component this morning we want to talk about, and that is a possible strike in Argentina by the grain inspectors. Is that right? Yeah, I just heard about that earlier this morning as well. It listed as a 24 hour strike. So, you know, probably won't be a big deal, but sure makes the sellers back off of the market. Right. And and you never know. These can last longer than 24 hours if they don't get what they want to. So it's definitely worth watching. And, and that in the weather, Michelle, um, a little bit colder forecast this week than we saw on Friday. So maybe we're building in a little bit of weather premium for corn, soybeans and wheat, too. Yeah, you bet. And the fact that we had Nopa Crush out here at 11 o'clock and that actually came in record for the month, didn't it? It sure did. Yeah, 185 million bushels. That's a great number, a new record, uh, about 2 million above the trade estimate. So it seems like that crush demand is staying strong and it should, right? With Argentina's very poor crop size, more talk that their crop is even smaller than that. And if they're uh, grain inspectors are, are striking, then there's probably even less soybean meal going out of the world market. So it all pretty much justified to have a nice rally in beans this morning. You bet. Uh, let's talk about technicals as well, because we kind of held where we needed to on the November beans on right. Friday. And then from a technical standpoint, I know a lot of the volume has flipped over to the July contract, but talk about old crop as well. Yeah, you're right. November beans on Friday held that 1295 support area I was watching. I was very nervous about that because j just my technical analysis anyway, that if we break that, we could have gone down to 1250 and tested the contract lows again. So I was I was pretty nervous about that. But today rallying back up looks pretty good. 20 day moving average curving a little bit now, hopefully makes a bell shaped bottom down here and can start grinding higher. So that looks good on the new crop side. And you're right. On the old crop, you know, the charts look actually much better there, of course, towards the higher end of the trading range. And rightfully so, because that's the old crop, which, you know, we can't make any more old crop. In fact, a lot of trade out there believe that USDA is going to have to lower the yield for last year's soybeans from the U.S. And, and we just got that crush report you mentioned that shows demand is still very strong, even at these prices. So, you know, yeah, we got May above $15, but I still kind of wonder if July doesn't need to get up there, too, just to kind of slow down demand, you could say. Yeah, it really feels like we're trading under a 200 million bushel ending stocks figure, even if USDA isn't willing to go there. What about the corn market? OK, you say weather is part of the factor that's pushing the market here today. Technically, corn, December corn at least, helped the, what, 550 support area and kind of bounced off there as well on Friday? Yeah, you're right. And I, I look for that 550 support to hold quite a while, um, maybe really until the July 4th holiday, because it, we do still have tight old crop stocks, right? And well, very tight, you could say for soybeans. And uh, until we know this crop is well developed and in good to excellent conditions, I don't think this new crop is gonna really crash that hard. And remember too, the funds are out of long positions for the most part. Yes, they can go short and maybe they do this year. That's to be determined yet, but 550 to me should really be nice support until you get people like me up in the Northern Plains can actually get some corn in, which I gotta tell you, I'm three weeks, a month away from that for sure. So what are you thinking about planting progress? Because in other areas of the Corn Belt, we had a lot of work that got done last week. Yeah, we'll get that first uh, planting progress. Well, not the first one, but an update on the planting progress this afternoon. But for me, it feels like the first one because it's fairly significant. Had a lot of guys out in the field last week. I mean, we've got clients in southern Minnesota that hit it hard and guys in Iowa hit it. But then I only talked to the guy right next to him and he said he didn't go because he thought it was a little too early yet. So I'm looking for around that nine to ten percent. Some of the trade are looking for more than that. It, it, we all get back here when it comes to planning progress. I think absolutely. Now we started off with some unwinding of those bull spreads, Dwayne, in the corn market, but you know those have been so strong here. We've had that inverse. Do you anticipate that is going to continue? Because we know that a lot of the elevators have rolled now to the July contract. Yeah, I think it probably does. You know, we didn't get the export sales flash. I was hoping this morning, you know, China was in for two days in a row buying some of our old crop and our new crop. Another reason why maybe we stay above 550 for Dees corn. So, no, I think this bull spreading continues. Like I said, the old crop is still tight. And 
it's not as tight in corn, but the problem is it's all on farmers hands. And if they're not willing to sell it, then it becomes a tight situation. So if end users want to get it out of farmers hands, they have to bull spread it hard. And the basis is going to have to do a lot of lifting as well. Yeah. Now you mentioned the weather in terms of the wheat market, not only is it dry, but we've also had some pretty cold temperatures. And I think there's some extended forecasts that look like we're going to see some cold again. So what is that market trading in terms of weather right now? And how much weather premium do we need to be putting in? I, you know, Kansas City to me, well, all the wheat complexes to me should rally a little bit. But I understand that the world is saying a different too. And they're saying, well, we, we have enough supply. You don't worry about it. Uh, but the Ukraine war is far from <laughs> easing my concerns either. But this Kansas wheat crop is really in poor condition. Uh, hearing different guys talking about, you know, part of the field looks good, part of the field looks horrible. Uh, what it is going to rain at some point in time, more than likely. But I'm kind of guessing it doesn't help the good to excellent category very much. So I think we need to keep adding some premium in Kansas. Now maybe we've done that in the form of spreads. You know, Kansas has really gained on Chicago out to almost record levels. So maybe that's your weather premium right there but i kind of look at minneapolis and go when is it going to be your turn this spring wheat because like i said to the north i mean nobody's planting any spring wheat right now and they won't be for probably two three weeks and so I, that's a tight situation there too so i think spring wheat has to buy some acres and maybe get their bull spread going too yeah minneapolis hasn't gotten much respect that's for sure and at the same time um, the black sea grain movement is a little bit in question right now and you've got some countries in the EU that are actually banning movement of Ukrainian grain. Yeah, you know, this talk started the last couple of weeks of Russia saying, hey, we may, maybe we're not going to extend the Ukraine grain deal through the Black Sea export corridor there. We've discredited it, right? The trade didn't even look at it when they said that. This might be different this time. Um, it seems like China doesn't really want to get involved with the, the, the war as much as we earlier were we're worried about they said over the weekend that they're not going to supply weapons to russia or ukraine so they kind of want to back out but i think they still want ukrainian corn so i thought that's why maybe russia would keep the corridor open but i think russia's getting painted into a corner here and maybe this isn't just a bluff for once maybe they are actually going to close things down and yet, yeah you mentioned very interesting story that farmers in eastern europe are tired of all this grain supply coming in from ukraine uh, into their domestic markets and putting their prices lower but uh, that's probably a tough hill to fight too yeah. So cattle market, we made some new all-time highs last week. We kind of took a little bit of a breather with some profit taking, maybe some yeah. hedge pressure. Uh, technically, what do you think about that market? Will we go back up and retest the highs here, especially if we have higher cash this week? Boy, I sure think so. I mean, it, technically, you, you could look at Thursday's high and say, boy, that looks like a blow off top. But this market was due for a correction very badly. It was overbought. The market had made what new contract highs five days in a row. Markets correct and do that. What they do is they get, you know, traders like me all bulled up and jump in the market and then they correct. And that's just how it works. I definitely think we go back up to those highs. Now, I don't want to get too cocky and bullish because I think last week I was telling you that, you know, we all get bulled up at the highs. But but when I look at the fundamentals, Michelle, I think it just has to go up more. Um, box beef this morning up sharply again. Slaughter wasn't huge last week. You know, we had a holiday in there, but still not a big slaughter. I keep hearing the same thing everyone else does. There, there's no cattle out there and packers are being told to just buy them no matter what to their buyers. So I, I think this market goes higher, maybe even quite a bit higher. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, you got futures at a discount to the cash. So you couldn't think no. futures could break very far here. That's for sure. Hawk market, any more than just short covering here today again? No, just short covering. I, I wouldn't get too excited about that market until I see boxes and cash hogs trading better. I'm not going to be friendly to that hog market. And I know the futures probably take off before I see that, but that is just fine. I, I don't trust it today. <laughs> no, I don't think a lot of people do. All right. Thanks for joining us. Wade Bussey with Bolt Marketing and that's Markets Now.